Kirk Fletcher has a ring light? Can you believe it? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> like the last guy on earth to have it. <laughs> you can start doing like uh, the makeup uh, tutorials, like all the Instagram girls. Yeah, totally. Like, now you want to make sure your forehead isn't shiny. No. <laughs> I, I, I did see a video of John, John Mayer. He, he literally did one like. He was like, wow. uh, it was like a, you know, it was like an eye tutorial. He got the makeup, did it all, and it was pretty that damn crazy, man. <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> damn funny, man. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. See, we oh. got our tellies here. <laughs> well, hey, Esquire. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> man, I love, I love this. Um, like I, we've talked about that, but you know, my, my dad was, uh, you know, he started collecting guitars on the road back in the late sixties. Oh, and, wow. And, 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 and like a lot of, you know, you hear everybody like, Oh, I used to have yeah. this one, but I sold it. He, yeah. he just never sold any of it, you know? Wow. Man. And, and, uh, so it, and and he was mostly you know he was mostly a telly guy. He's got a handful of Strads and Gibsons, but yeah. mostly tellies and Esquires, right? Yeah. Um, but you know, back in that era, man, he'd go to the pawn shops and and buy them for a hundred bucks, one hundred and fifty bucks, you know. Yeah. Um. So, uh, in, anyways, it, yeah, this uh, I like. He he lets me play this one, you know. Yeah. And a lot of the other ones, like his. He's got two broadcasters and like those, uh, oh. those, those <laughs> stay locked up, you know. Yeah. Although yeah, I, I mean, man. yeah. He he brings them out occasionally. I play them, but man, what about amps? Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Kirk, I was, you know, I I was spoiled growing up because all I ever had to play on was was his old stuff, amps. And yeah. Guitars. Um. And and then plus, you know, when I was a a kid, that stuff wasn't that yeah. You know, yeah. Sought after or expensive, you know. Yeah. Um totally. so yeah, I I was spoiled, man, because because all I ever played on was all that old vintage stuff. Yeah. I love the tweets. I'm starting to get back into wanting some tweet stuff again, you know. <sighs> uh man, you know what? I mean, I me too. I've always loved the tweet stuff. I went to the I ran by the music store here the other day, the Austin, yeah. the, the vintage. Yeah. Store. Man, they had a they had a tweed uh, a tweed twin that had been it had been recovered. You know, it looked. Yeah. Like, I had no idea. They, I was like, what What are these? And they didn't even have a price tag. I was like, what are these going for these days? Yeah. He said that those are going for like twenty grand. A tweed twin is going for twenty grand now. A high powered tweed twin, yeah. Wow, because I know basements were like ten. I was like, "What?" <laughs> it's yeah, ridiculous. It's, it's insane. Yeah, I, I'm glad I at least I've you know I've got I've got some of the smaller amps. I got my Princeton here and some chairs. Yeah, those are. And uh, yeah. we had we had a Harvard. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. My dad's old basement. Um, unfortunately, it got burned up in a house fire about 20 oh, man. years ago. I used to play. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Um, I think you showed up to the studio one time. We were doing that little thing for um, Carla Olson, and you showed up with like a 15, some kind of Tweed Vibra Lux or something like that with a 15. I think oh, uh, a Tremolux. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I forgot. Yeah. We got, yeah, I got the Tremolux, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that uh, actually, that amp, um, my my dad bought that amp new in 1959. He wow! Like, he like went up to New York and you know took the bus and, and took his money and went and bought it. You know, <laughs> yeah. you, I mean, you've seen that amp. I mean, you know, it's yeah. it, it's actually 112. Wow! In, in speaker, but his yeah. his story was like he brought it home. And and his mother was like, "Oh my God, what are you gonna do with you know? <laughs> Yo, what do you need this for? You're not a yeah. this for freaking out, you know." <laughs> but yeah, luckily he still has that one he bought new. That's 
Crazy, man. Wow. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I couldn't believe those those tweet amps, man. <laughs> 20 grand. Wow. I, well, thank you, Joe Badamasi yeah, and Keith gonna, Richards. I was, I was gonna say, Joe, <laughs> Joe's got them all, so. <laughs> Well, at least with him, I know I can borrow a couple if I ever <laughs> Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Yo, <Bo. laughs> Well, man, uh, I, be I better do an introduction before we forget, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. We'll start talking, and the next thing you know... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're just talking gear for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> but Kirk Fletcher, man, Kirky Fletcher. So, so, so glad to have you here, man. And, and this glad is to be here, Jake. This is a blast to, to get to hang out, you know. I mean, yeah, absolutely. If it wasn't for the, you know, the whole situation this this year, we wouldn't we wouldn't have even thought to do this, you know. And, yeah, should have been doing it all along. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you're you know you're living in Switzerland for the last yeah. four years, you know. So yeah, um, it, it's it's fun to get some some FaceTime. I think yeah, I think the. Since you've been over there, the the last couple of times I've seen you is like out at the Nam show and yeah, you know, yeah, Nam, yeah. I was planning on going. You know, I was coming out to do that show with Landau and um, Eric Johnson, who was going to do that show and it got canceled. But I was going to try and stay a little longer and hang out with everybody because it's been so long. Austin is one of my favorite places on the face of the earth by a mile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it always has been. Yeah, it's, man. But um, well, you did do um, you did do the the live stream with Josh and uh, yeah, right earlier this year. I was rusty, <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting up at home making pasta, making YouTube videos and stuff. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. playing records <laughs> and so it was you it was uh who all, who all was on that it was me and josh smith my good dear brother and uh matt schofield yeah, matt. yeah so we all had a good time it was cool to catch up and everything too and then travis carlton played and then i had my drummer dave kidd play with us and then lamar carter played with josh and matt so that was family reunion out there on the old uh Southern California family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what was funny was I was talking to Josh before y'all were doing that, and he was yeah. he was kind of like, man, Matt and Kirk, they you know I don't know if they or, you know they've they've hardly been even playing any any gigs this year. You know they haven't even played live, kind of like yeah. Uh, and I was like, well, me too, man. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> <laughs> it's like none of us have. I'd be just as rusty as them, you know. You know, I I actually played a couple gigs actually um in uh Italy during the summer, maybe one or two gigs, and then that was it. You know, other gigs got canceled, but man, you know, I'm sort of at the point now though. It's like you know, I want it to be a little bit more right before <laughs> before I go out because it's like almost not worth it for me to go out for one gig and go through all that. And I want to, I want every gig to be super fun. Yeah. 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 You know, <laughs> well, especially, you know, you do all this work to get that set up and then uh, everything's getting canceled anyways. Yeah. So you might as well just stay home and spin records. <laughs> Talk to your friends on zoom chats. <laughs> hey, it's, it's a new yeah. deal, man. Yeah gotta be uh making our fortunes off the youtubes now that's right <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to get into some kirky history or <laughs> absolutely all right kirk fletcher yeah man so um i mean we've been knowing each other at least for well yeah since definitely the, 20 years <laughs> well, yeah, since, since the later 90s so yeah more yeah. than 20, 20 something years yeah but, for sure so yeah, I'd, I'd like to go back and, and talk about your whole uh, upbringing in, in music and um, how you came into uh, into the kind of music that that you had a love for, you know, because you know um, that that that's not that common for for guys our age back then. <laughs> yeah, especially well, you know, 
young kids, you know? Yeah. You know, what's crazy for me is like some of this stuff I can't explain, you know, because I have a 23 year old daughter and I'm like, man, when I was that age, I was like face deep in like, you know, guitar player magazines and, you know, looking at old guitars and records and all that kind of stuff. But like, I think that the big thing for me was just start, you know, with my father being a pastor of a church. You know, that whole thing and my mom and the whole church thing is where it started. And it wasn't like modern gospel. It was like old timey gospel. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like blues and old time gospel is so connected. I mean, it's so connected in soul music and all that. So I just naturally gravitated towards that as well as what was going on on MTV and all of that kind of stuff, too. You know, because when you're like 10, 11 years old, it's like, man, you know, you like anything, anything and everything that's good, you know? Man. You know what I mean? you just like, oh, man, this solo by Tony Iommi or Eddie Van Halen, that's cool, you know, because you don't really have a filter yet, you know? That's exactly you know, I, I, I listen to uh, Prince, a lot of Prince and... The um, Dixie Hummingbirds from church, Howard Carroll, the guitar player, and, you know, Albert Collins was definitely doing things where you could see him on TV playing with different people and just everybody. And then you about had, 19, oh, okay. What I, you gonna say? I was going to say, you were me mentioning Albert Collins. You remember yeah. that, that silly movie? He made a, a cameo. Adventures in Babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody's getting out of here without playing the blues. <laughs> totally, man. Yeah. Totally. You know that uh that uh I saw Albert Collins too, like I think a little bit after that in 1988 at the Long Beach Blues Festival. Wow. So, you know, I was I was done. You know, that was pretty much it. And I was in what junior high school or something, you know, or yeah, junior high school, and that was it. I mean, it was really a path just to get to playing, you know, blues because that was, I mean, Albert Collins. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, did, did your did your dad take you down to that festival or? Oh no, my my older brother played. I man, I forgot to mention my older brother Walter. Um, he he was a guitar player and he got me started playing guitar and we both played in my father's church and he was a lot older than me. He was 17 years older than me. So, you know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so he was born in 1958. So that was right at, you know, he was driving, married and all that stuff by the time <laughs> I was coming along, you know, and he had all the records and all yeah. that stuff, you know, Hendrix and everything. Yeah. You know, you were mentioning about, you know, at that age, I mean, yeah, man, you don't, you don't care what it was, you know, you were listening. Yeah. To it. And it made me think, I, I found this, this little clip from the, from the, the Austin paper. Um, and I, I'll have to put this up like on my, on my page. Yeah. On Instagram. But uh, it, it, was, it was like a little clip, a little thing they did in called the hit list. And I'll have, yeah. to, I'll, I'll put this up um later but it, it was like they would they would do a, a short little interview with some awesome musician what, yeah. what were they listening to that week right yeah so man yeah. Check, I, I died laughing this is from uh it says uh february 1991 it says uh -huh. it says the hit list is a weekly survey of what awesome musicians are listening to this uh -huh. list is from 10 year old jake andrews <laughs> nice also known as Guitar Jake, who who jams with musicians at Antones and will join Blue Star Gatemouth Brown this, yeah. Monday, this Monday, something like. So here, here's the list I gave him, man. All right, number one, Live at the Regal, B.B. King. Yeah. Number two, Please Don't Hurt Him, MC Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number, number three, Okie Dokie Stomp, Gatemouth Brown. Nice. Number four, Ice Ice Baby, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then, then number five was Family Style, Vaughn Brothers. Yeah, totally. So oh, I, man. You know, it's just like what all yeah. of Yeah. 
all over the place. I mean, and definitely that like family style record when that came out. I mean, obviously we were all very sad, but I mean, it was a killer record to me, you know. Man, I I did a a little video about that the other day. I mean, that yeah, that's that's one of my my favorite yeah. things that either of them did. I mean, it just that you know, it had that production by you know Nile Rogers. Yeah, Nile Rogers. And and uh, totally different, obviously totally different musicians on the record. It wasn't yeah. trouble. And you know. what about what about Stevie singing on that record though? Woo man, he was singing his ass off. He sure was, yeah. And of course, that was, that was when Jimmy started singing too. Yeah. I mean, like Long Way From Home and like Telephone uh, song, you know those songs? I mean, Stevie was just like killing it, man. He sounded so amazing. That was, so yeah. bad, too, yeah. Yeah, I guess it came out about two weeks after, after he passed away, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I went out and got the record with my brother. Well, the the compact disc and the long, you know, cardboard box. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, were you already hip to to Stevie Ray before? Oh yeah, I got hip to Stevie probably, and I was probably like eleven or twelve. Yeah, uh, so I was definitely buying the, you know, like In Step, and you know, I think it was, I think Live Alive was right when I first got my allowance and start, you know, kind of <laughs> eighty six, eighty seven or something. Yeah. So I got the cassette tape, you know, but yeah, I, I was definitely hip before he passed, you know. Yeah, wow, man. I mean, he was yeah. like our guy, you know? He was like our guy, our time and everything. Obviously, I spent a lot of time listening to Hendrix, but I mean, that was like right now, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, you can yeah. imagine here in Austin, I mean. Oh, man, I couldn't even imagine. <laughs> that, that was like the, the, you know, pride and joy of the city, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, it, it was it. I mean, obviously, yeah, it 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 hit so hard here. I mean, uh, you know, even as a kid, I remember, you know, every, every billboard, every 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 sign on every yeah. company for that whole week is just like yeah. Um, Man, you yeah. know, what's, oh, what were you gonna say? <laughs> I, I was gonna say I saw that picture you put up the other day. Uh, where, where you got that, you're like, man, that's definitely Lenny I'm playing that chord, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, man. Got the Strat going and like, yeah. That, and that was probably junior high. I'm pretty sure that was junior high school, you know, 91, 90 or something like that. And it was definitely Lenny, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do yeah. you do? <laughs> and of course, so, so your, your father's, uh, where was his church? His church was in Compton, California. Right, right. From right. like 1972 to like, you know, like the 2000s, early 2000s or so. Mm -hmm. My mom passed away and then he kind of got out of the ministry. But mm -hmm. yeah, that was where I cut my teeth, man. I could do whatever I want. You know, in that style of church, you know, like the holiness church, man, it's sort of like, as long as it fits, you can do it. So I was like using like pedals and like playing, <laughs> like acting out my Stevie Ray on gospel songs and all kinds of stuff, you know? It worked. Of course, of course. It was blues. <laughs> and, and so you have, uh, tell me, how many siblings do you have? Uh, my oldest brother, he passed away and he was uh, the oldest. And then I have a middle brother who you know, <laughs> C.T. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and then me, us three boys. And then I have four stepsisters that are older, you know. Yeah. Much older, well, well, yeah. well C.T. is quite a bit older. Yeah, yeah 16 years. Yeah, so okay. him and Walt were, you know, a year apart. And then, whoops. <laughs> <Her name. laughs> wow. wow. Gotcha. So you really, yeah. you're really the baby, man. Yeah, I was the baby. I mean, they, they were like my second parents, my brothers, you know. There was no fighting with my older brothers. <laughs> it was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Wow, okay. So, um, well, yeah, so what was your first guitar? Oh, man, well, the very first guitar was like some Sears and Roebuck you know, weird acoustic guitar that I dragged around the house. And this was probably like, man, I was probably seven, six, seven years old, you know. But my first legit guitar was a Squire Strat, you know. 
uh, you know, died in the wool Stratocaster guy, man. I mean, that's what I learned how to play on, figure out how to work on and mess up, you know, put holes in it. <laughs> and so and were you just teaching yourself? Did you ever have anybody? Oh, show yeah. My older brother showed me some chords okay. and stuff, okay. but you know, when you really, really love something, it's like, it's like nobody really had to like just sit down. Okay, you do this. I didn't care. I just wanted to play it at every you know moment. You know, so I would just sit there and work out stuff to the best of my ability. Somebody made me a cassette tape of Texas Flood, and you know, you just sit there and I played all that stuff wrong. You know, like Lenny wrong. You know, but I mean, what can you do when you're like eleven? <laughs> you know. You know, I, I try to, you know, cause, cause, cause we're in that, that cusp that was kind of the, the last of that, uh, you know, before, yeah. before streaming and YouTube and everything yeah, totally. and, and specifically, you know, playing guitar. I mean, everything, you, anything you want, you just go online and there it is, yeah. you know? Uh, so we're kind of on that cusp, you know, uh, where we, we, we learned how to play right before all of that, you know? Yeah, and, definitely. But you, you, you think about younger people now trying to do it. I mean, back in our era, you know, and, and of course, way before that, I mean, yeah, you'd have to save up your allowance, go buy one tape. One thing. No, man, <laughs> I mean, that, that was expensive, you know, 15 bucks. Yeah. And, and you had to just live with that one record. You had to learn it inside and out, right? So it better be a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, you know, one click on Spotify, well, there's every possible thing that artist ever did. You know, you, you never even knew they did all this stuff, you know, and well, you know, it's too much. I mean, I don't know how you could focus on one thing and really. That's the, yeah, that's the crazy thing, because like, even like talking about these records like Prince or Stevie or any of those people, like, yeah, I knew to go out and get. Texas flood first. Couldn't stand the weather. <laughs> you know, like I knew, like, you know, Texas flood had already came out, but I knew to get them in order because I could only get one, like you said. And then maybe if I was lucky, I could get a guitar player magazine, you know, and just oh, like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yeah, a couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, now it's just, I mean, it's so much at once. I don't even know how you could pick one thing to start on. You're just like, you know, you look on YouTube or Spotify, you're like, oh, this, oh, wow, this. Yeah, all at the same time. That's weird. You know, like, yeah, because, yeah, like, I think some of the things that I checked out, because, like, you know, like, even the Beatles, you know, like, I think the Beatles are genius. I think it's genius stuff. Totally. But, like, at the same time, I didn't grow up with the Beatles. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I wanted to hear something crazy, I would listen to like Funkadelic, Hendrix and stuff like that, because it's all coming at the same time. If you got like Beatles, you listen to Aretha Franklin, Funkadelic, Prince, all this kind of, you know, but 1965 or 64 when the Beatles came out and you see them on Ed Sullivan, of course, you're going to yeah, freak yeah. out. I didn't. I grew up in the 80s. Sure, <laughs> you sure. know? Of course. I mean. Yeah, I'm, just like that list I wrote you. I mean, you know, it was like I I was learning all this stuff that my my dad was telling me. All right, you need yeah. to do this. I've I've said this before, but you know, he would, uh, you know, he'd bribe me. He'd be like, all right, if you, if you learn this, uh, you know, whatever song yeah. about live at the Regal, if you learn it note for note by ear, yeah. he's like, all right, I'll I'll give you ten bucks or yeah, fifteen bucks, you know. That was the same with my brother. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so I had that, that motivation to learn, but, and then, uh, you know, on, on the weekends, a lot of these guys, I was actually able to go and meet. Yeah. Play. See them in the flesh. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess I was kind of spoiled cause you know, it just seemed like the normal thing is like, all right, I'm, I'm working on all this stuff during the week and then I'm going yeah. playing on stage but with these guys. But, you know, it, 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 I would say that, yes, that was fortunate, but also just you being so young and having a desire to want to do it, too. I mean, that's 
that's a kind of a cool thing too, you know, because there's a lot of kids that might, may have grew up in the South or in Chicago or whatever that didn't have any desire to do that so you know you had a desire to like do that and you were there to do it so these two things are pretty cool you know yeah yeah but like i was saying is like you know i would be doing that but then but then at the same time i'm like you know man when uh you know uh that nirvana never mind when that oh yeah i was like what you know that was just as cool as any of this to me you know yeah See, I went the other way by Nirvana and mind you that I think, you know, that was when I was in high school, right? Okay. Man, I was already a, a snob by that point. I mean, I had already went through like the radio and all that and I was getting into like listening to jazz. Sure, <laughs> it's so sure. weird, man, yeah, you know, yeah. like blues and jazz and all that stuff. That's true. When I got to high school, that was it. But yeah. I mean, I mean, do it, when that you know, real early nineties for me when I was yeah. still in grade school, I was, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, I had like, you know, NWA tape, you know, oh, and, yeah, me too. <laughs> and, and, all that, and then, then I'd be working on in my cassette box, you know, yeah. and I'd have, you know, uh, BB King and Freddie King and yeah. I mean, and I don't mean to um, like diminish Nirvana because I definitely you know listened to all that music later and got into it because I was foolishly not listening to it then but it, it's incredible man you know actually I heard a um a orchestra do his songs Kurt Cobain Nirvana's songs and I'm like damn this is crazy it sounded incredible just to hear his music being done by an orchestra I'm like man it's definitely <clears throat> he was definitely amazing, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. But anyway. Well, cool, man. All right. So, so yeah, you, you, you grew up in the church and yeah. your father's a minister and, uh, uh, you know, you're listening to all that stuff your brothers put on you and showing you some stuff, you know, and all this stuff you're yeah. on your own. So, um, so you're in high school, right? Yeah. And, and you said you started listening to a lot more jazz and stuff then. Yeah, I never played jazz, but I started listening to <laughs> like Les Montgomery and Jimmy Smith and stuff. Yeah, what, man. But anyway, you know, I was going to say that, like, I had this whole, I had this whole life, musical life before I got into, like, playing pure blues, you know, with, like, Kim Wilson and all those people. Like, I played, like, a lot of funk and R&B and stuff after church you know so it was it was sort of like this whole thing and then i was going in i chose to play straight blues you know i was coming from all this stuff because that was the music that really just you know i wanted to do probably all along anyway after that albert collins concert uh, yeah 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 yeah, so, yeah. um really for my own playing though um especially as i you know i got more teenage years you know yeah uh, most of my music I was listening to is all my father's record collection. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so in addition to the, to the blues stuff, uh, most of it was all kind of sixties R and B stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. and in fact, bands he was playing w with in the mid sixties, I mean, that's all they were doing. So yeah, that, that was a, that was a huge, part of my my playing and learning was was just lear learning you know r&b rhythm and yeah and, and all that kind of stuff all those changes um, yeah that's learning that tank playing you know and yeah so that yeah. was that was a huge part of my my uh you know music education is just learning how to play i mean and and i tell people all the time you know not just learning the guitar parts. I mean, learn learn the bass lines. Learn yeah, the absolutely. Chord lines, you know. Yeah. Learn the play the vocal melody, you know. And man, you know, it seems like I could really pick up on the thing, you know, when I spend a little bit more time in Austin, and you know, I talked to Doyle, Big Doyle, and all those people, and it seemed like that there was definitely a big rhythm and blues thing too. You know, I mean, it seemed like all you guys love blues, obviously, but also like rhythm and blues and knew a lot of those songs and, 
in the clubs playing that stuff like Big Doyle playing all those, you know, Bobby Bland tunes and songs with changes and Benny Freeman playing all this cool stuff, you know? I mean Yeah, for me, I, I never I never really separated that out because yeah. I, that, that's yeah. the stuff that really fires me up is playing yeah. playing all that R and B. Um you know, for instance, like my my father, um he was just that that wasn't really his exposure a lot of the more kind of older rural blues stuff you know yeah uh, i mean he he was big into john lee hooker but yeah. but really for him the electric blues era that yeah. that was when he came up and so yeah. so that with all the r&b stuff i mean that's what still fires me up you know me too i mean that's kind of what has come back to like <laughs> I kind of went full circle, came right back to all, you know, you throw a couple changes in there and you got some John Lee Hooker, Muddy Waters, all that stuff, you know, and B.B. King. And then you got, you know, Bobby Bland and all of the R&B and O.V. Wright and stuff, you know, that's that's what really, you know, gets me going, man. <laughs> so I'm right there with you. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so in in high i mean it was it in high school where you uh how did you, how did you get out playing with some other people playing oh yeah people starting to play live gigs you know it's it's real simple man that it's just that sort of um thing i was playing with my brother and first i started playing like a little r&b and doing backyard parties and little stuff man i still love playing backyard parties <laughs> and i would play bass guitar, whatever, just to make music with my older brother. And then some members of the church would kind of do this. And I met a few piano players, this guy, uh, Rudy Copeland. He used to play with uh, Johnny Guitar Watson and these different people. And just, man, just playing tunes, like 70s, 60s soul, like you were saying. We were doing the same thing, man, playing all of these songs, you know? And that's that's really a lot of to this day, that's some of the most fun I have, you know, just finding a really, really amazing singer that yeah. knows a bunch of those tunes, you know. Yeah. You, oh man. Yeah. Like there's, there's Wayne nothing. Bennett. It's sort of like a Wayne Bennett style thing, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of style. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um <clears throat> so what was uh I mean, what were you in? Were you in a band situation first after that, or how did you go from that till to getting to where you were backing up? Other yeah, artists? well, I played in like a gospel hip hop band for a while named Brent Jones and the TP Mob. Played with them for a while, and then I was playing a little bit of quartet gospel with different local um, bands around um, LA and stuff like that. Nothing too heavy but you know really fun and really good training you know and then the quartet gospel kind of just smoothly transitioned into playing you know more blues it kind of just I kind of weeded out all of that and got to more hanging around blues clubs and stuff because the late 90s mid to late 90s was a perfect time you know in LA all of those blues clubs you I know? tell people that all the time I'm like man the, the blues scene in and well, you know, the, the, I would say more overall, just the roots music scene in the, yeah, early mid to late nineties. Yeah. That's when I, I started coming out to LA, um, a lot starting about 95. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, well, how it happened was I, I had been playing BB King's club Memphis a lot. My, cool, my, dad, man. my dad, yeah. yeah, my dad was kind of, well, he really was my, manager you know and he's yeah he, he was setting all this stuff up to me i'm just a kid playing you know and so, yeah so i i would be going up there a lot and i'd i'd play you know uh i'd play with the king b's house band and, nice uh, yeah you know, i'd go up there i won't go up there and open for bb at, at the club and all these yeah. i did that a bunch well through that you know they i gotten got him in touch with uh uh, manager over at BB Kings LA, the over at University. Yeah. Um, and so they got me out there. Actually, the first time I came out, uh, yeah, I was playing with uh, Arthur Adams. Oh, 
my buddy Arthur. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and, uh, and and back in that era, you know, I, like I said, I've been spending a lot of time playing up in Memphis. Man, my dad, he'd take me over uh, to all those those men's uh, men's dresswear shops in Memphis, and man. I mean, I was like 15. I get like lime green suits, red suits, you know, yes. <laughs> like, like all that, all that, like, yeah, classy, you know, menswear stuff. So I, I'd show up out there and they're like, man, we're like, like, man, <laughs> this kid, you know, dressed up like this, you know, and, uh, and so that's how I, I started playing with all those guys there. It was a great, great scene there. Man, so you remember you remember when the food was really good too. Oh, remember, yeah. remember uh, Bibby Kings and House of Blues when they first started? The uh, food was really good back then. I was like, man. <laughs> in fact, I, I have this memory of uh, you know, a, a lot of the kind of rotating house band guys back then. I mean, those are yeah. some of the best players in LA, Tony Bronigle. Oh uh, yeah. Al Alvino Bennett, you know. Uh, yeah. All these James guys. Gatson even done some of it. I, James James yeah. Gatson played a few gigs with me there, you know. Yeah. He backed me up. Um, wow. But, yeah, I, I do remember that backstage at BB's. I remember yeah. one night we're like, you know, they're like, all right, showtime in, in 10 minutes, guys. <laughs> Tony Bronigle's back there, and they had just served him <laughs> an enormous plate of food, <laughs> all this fried chicken, mashed potatoes, <laughs> I mean, the plate was this big, and I, 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 he was like, "All right, just a minute." He like, I mean, he ate all that right before going on. Wow! Up. And I, I was like, man, because I never like to eat a lot before I'm playing. Yeah, not that much. I mean, <laughs> I could do it back then, though. But I can't. I man, I would kill myself if I'd done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I was just like, wow, man, man. But BB's was was awesome, man. Um, I used to play, well, I played the Blue Cafe all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, Blue Cafe was great. Um, and then came Cafe Boogaloo later. Yeah. Some of those Cafe smaller Boogaloo. places like uh, Jack Sugar Shack. I used to play. Yeah, Jack Sugar Shack. That was fun. The Lava Lounge, Hop <laughs> City, all of them. Oh, and, man. And the Mint, you know, even back yeah. then. So. The cool thing about Blue Cafe on a Friday night, though, you could play as loud as you wanted. <laughs> Oh, that was a cool thing about the Blue Cafe. You can play loud. Blue Cafe was great, man. It was it was a yeah. real scene, yeah. And so, so yeah, I had a lot of fun as a 15, 16, 17-year-old, you know, coming. Totally. <laughs> I mean, that's where I cut my teeth the same time. That's where I cut my teeth playing the blues clubs in L.A., all that whole scene, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Great, man. So, yeah. uh, so when did you start playing with Kim? Oh, I had played, I had, man, this is a really condensed. Kim Wilson, if, if everybody's not. Yeah, this is a really condensed thing. So I started playing on the blues scene, probably 97, uh -huh. 98. Yeah. So you can imagine how hard I had to work to be able to kind of audition for Kim in 2000. So I started playing with him in the blues band in 2000. So I done like day and night studying you know chicago blues and all that stuff because that was my dream ever since i was a kid i wanted to play with kim wilson the fabulous wow. thunderbirds i mean come on you know of course, man yeah and yeah and it, and it it worked out you know so remind me was that because i know kim he did a thing like kim wilson and the tiger men and you know yeah that was after that i had i listened to all that stuff you know when it came out and that was after this was more like after that uh whole blue collar thing it was like you know because he had a, a bunch of different guitar players but i got in there playing with him regularly in about 2000 so that was after the antones releases and stuff what, you know what, was that as the t-birds or what was that or oh that was as the solo band yeah, which was a lot of fun because that was the closest thing to what I envisioned Antones to be <laughs> like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Kim was was already based out there, right? Yeah, yeah, and so was Denny Freeman too at that time. <laughs> yeah, well, Denny's a legend, man. He's <laughs> totally grew up playing with him here as well. You know. Wow. You know what got me about Denny, man? I got to tell this quick story about Denny. The thing that got me 
that freaked me out. And I was young too. I was still in high school or whatever. I saw that Stevie Ray, uh, Austin City Limits, you know, where W.C. Clark, yeah. you know, had the birthday thing. And remember his solo on Big Town Playboy with Andrew Lestrelli? Oh, Den Denny's solo? Denny's, Denny's yeah. solo. On I was like, what planet is this guy from? <laughs> I was like what? And even being that young, it like he. I was like he just played like muddy waters and everything in one solo, and then put this spin on it. That so ever since then, and then I found out he was living in L.A. and it was game over. And then you know, yeah, Den Denny just has such an out, you know, just outside of the box way of putting the, all the pieces together, man. <laughs> I mean, like that big solo, you know, the big solo on Doyle Bram Hall. Um, seniors, uh, what is it called? Is it news? Yeah, that, gonna be big for someone, but that's a, that guitar song. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, what was he thinking? Like, you know, that's scary to me. Like, when somebody plays like that, that's like just okay. This guy is way somewhere on another level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you listen to those all those solo records, then he did. You're, some oh, of yeah. Like man, where sled, sled, no, how did he how did he think that up, man? You know. Oh. Anyway, love Benny. <laughs> so and and you played with uh, Kim, um, really? Oh yeah. For, for I played. Years, right? I played with Kim for a couple of years in that kind of solo band, but we would always play off and on. And then I played with Charlie Musselwhite after that. Right. Um, and there are some others in there, I think. But then the T-Birds, one of the incarnations of the T-Birds, um, 2004 okay. was when I started and played a few years with them, 2004 to 2007, yeah. with Nick yeah. Curran in the band, too. And that was, Yeah, you, you, know. you and Nick were tight, right? Yeah, man. You know, because I would always stay at Nick's place when I came to Austin. <laughs> So you can imagine how that was. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> I'll just say fantastic memories. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Uh, and you know, Gary Clark was around too. You know, Gary Clark Jr. was around hanging too. So it was a whole, you know, Jay Moeller and everybody. Absolutely, yeah. man. That that was that was that was a, still a fun time here um in Austin where you know all all these guys were talking about Nick and, and Gary and yeah. Um, we're just uh, we're just around the scene, you know. It's not like Gary now. Gary's man. Gary's the he's the biggest thing that's ever come out of Austin about now. Oh man, you know, and seeing him play in like the Continental Club, man, and it was just like I was like, man, I got to get my stuff together, man. I got to start singing, you know. Seeing him and like Nick Kern and all the guys kind of just be their own men early i was like and you too everybody i was like damn i gotta start singing at least so i can just kind of you know do my own thing whatever i want to do you know exactly exactly yeah that's you know uh you know some of those guys those old timers i mean i mean i remember you know gate mouth telling me that buddy guy those guys they're like yeah once i was around t 12 years old they're like they're like, boy, you you really got to start singing. You you don't want to just be a guitar player your whole life, you know. So yeah, they, they pushed me. You know, everybody was really pushing me, and I can yeah. tell you when I was about 12, 13, first having this thing, man, that was that was some awkward shit, man. Woo, man! I sang one song for like three years. <laughs> I was like a Jimmy Reed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it's just like I talked. I talked to Josh about this when he started first having the same. <laughs> oh man, you know it was crazy, you know. But I, yeah, somehow, some way, and then like starting so late, you know, and then it's like I've been playing all this time, and then to start to sing it was just kind of, it was weird, man. Well, it, it actually, I mean, uh, I, I had noticed, well, you know, I mean, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, he, of course, he never sang, right? But yeah, that's right. In the last number of years, now, yeah. now he's singing a lot. I'm like, man, all right, Kenny, it sounds, yeah. it sounds great to me. I'm like, why didn't you ever do this before, you know? Yeah. I had a great voice. Man, Jimmy Vaughn has a great voice. I like Jimmy Vaughn's voice. Exactly, you know? So, 
It's I think that killed all of us, man. When Jimmy Von started singing, it was like, wow, this is like, and, that, it, and I thought this is exactly how I expected him to sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like cool. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. He just he, he keeps it cool, man. <laughs> yeah. You would be, you would be disappointed, like you know, Jimmy's Mister Cool, and then all of a sudden he starts singing. You're like, oh. yeah, like so, oh man. It, it, be, it it would kill your whole dreams about it, but luckily, oh luckily. man. Uh, that whole thing, like the five Royales having the background singers and the whole, that was like a big deal in, in our world. That was like when he came out with the um, first record, Strange Pleasure. Man. man, that was a whole. Once again, Nile Rodgers, you know. And yeah. Made it just cool, man. Super cool. Yeah. Everybody came, started playing capos. And all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What a trendsetter, that Jimmy Vaughn. <laughs> Darn it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Anyways, so, I'm talking about all these Texas guys. Like, I don't listen to anything else, but, you know. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> jumping all over. But did, did you listen to T-Birds a lot when you were young? Yes, a whole lot. You know, because I we have, like, these – we had these swap meets and stuff out. I'm sure they have plenty of swap meets in Texas. But we had the swap meet, and I found – um the first record, you know, the one they call Girls Go Wild, but it's actually the fabulous thing. <laughs> I found that record um, early. You know, I was probably like maybe 14. So uh, yeah. immediately when I heard it, I was just like, because I had probably heard Tough Enough and all this stuff. And I go, is this the same band? You know, yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, obviously I like all of it, but that that record, Wait on Time, really got to me because it was. It was just the bass and everything. Oh, man. I mean, same for me. I was probably about 14 when I, 13 when I started getting into that. I mean, for me, it's like, you know, of course, being here with Stevie, Stevie Ray here, you know, growing up in the scene here. But, yeah. but really, you know, he, he wasn't really, uh, by the time I was starting to play in the clubs, he wasn't really living here. He was living in Dallas. Um, yeah. So I, I had a lot more exposure to Jimmy even back then. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, I listened to, to to Stevie, but I was listening to a lot more Jimmy um, th even than his brother, you know? So that yeah. was a huge influence on me. Um, Man, you know, it's crazy too, because I didn't even have the next record, like Butt Rockin' and all that stuff, T-Bird Rhythm. I didn't even have, I, I only had like the first, I was like, good for like a few years before I got like the second record. That's that, that's right, man. I mean, I still go back to that first record and it's just like, for me, when that stuff that I learned, you know, just like obsessed over and, and learned note for note back then, it's it's like riding, you know, learning to ride a bike. It's, it immediately comes back, you know? I, I, yeah. That stuff's like burned into my brain, you know. Yeah, you hear that drum feel starting way, way on time, you know, you know. Bang. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Well, um, you know, this is all the stuff I want to talk about all the time. <laughs> that's amazing, man. Yeah, and so, yeah. so when was it that you really started to sing more? Oh man, this was way later. I mean, like, so yeah. I, I was uh, went played with the T-Birds and then after that, um, I just wanted to kind of do my own thing because, you know, I really, all of us really honored the T-Birds legacy. I mean, we love the T-Birds, so we were huge fans. So it started to get to the point where I wanted to just, you know, I was hanging around with younger guys. You know, I was hanging out with guys and my friend Mike Landau and all of these type people and, you know, listening to a lot of Hendrix and all that stuff. And I just wanted to be kind of a younger guy. You know, I kind of just wanted to be into the music going on now, you know, yeah. as opposed to this fantastic, wonderful legacy. I just was thinking about, you know, I was listening to Derek Trucks and like all of this stuff going on, you know, and I figured feedback and the fabulous Thunderbirds probably wouldn't go together. <laughs> But but Nick just with his overall style, he brought that oh yeah that, that modern element mixed with the you know yeah 
That was cool. Yeah, and, and Nick, I mean, you know, he would dress like a punk rocker, but still play it, you know, killer, you know. So it was That's it was cool. crazy. Yeah, probably would, the most interesting looking version of the T. Yeah. <laughs> Big black guy, punk rocker, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember uh, the last time. I don't, I don't know. It wasn't the last time I saw Nick, but maybe one of the last times I saw him play, he was playing with Big Doyle. And, oh yeah, and uh, that was a that was a that was a cool, a funny look for Doyle's band too, because Doyle's back here, and then Nick. I mean, yeah, Nick was like the ultimate at, at his punk rock, you know. Yeah, the height. Yeah. Man, you know, I've done a few gigs during that time with Big D too. I think, uh, I think either Steve Thomas. You remember Steve Thomas, the um, tech for the T Birds, and oh, yeah. Doyle, Steve yeah. Thomas. I think him or Nick or somebody told him, man, Kirk wants to play so bad with Doyle. Because <laughs> I saw, I've always been a fan of Doyle's, but then we were playing the Antone's anniversary and he had uh, Mike Keller and uh, Scott Nelson playing. Sure. Yeah, Man, that was so incredible. <laughs> I was like, I need to play with this guy, man, you know, and the singing and everything. But anyway, yeah, that was an incredible time, you know, and Nick sounded fantastic with them, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Didn't need me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, and it's kind of like, like even when I was talking with Josh, I mean, you know, uh, well, he, he started off, you know, like me doing his own thing and fronting the band yeah. and singing and stuff. And then he he spent quite a few years where he was just backing up other artists, right? And then yeah. uh, Josh Smith, they don't know who we're talking about. But, yeah, uh, like, who's that, dog? But, but then just kind of like that, he's like, you know, I guess maybe in the last ten years, he he was really like, you know, what I I really want to get back focused on my own my own thing, you know, and yeah. get away from from just backing up other artists you know um so it, it kind of seems like uh, you've been doing that as well and I, i've done that the whole <laughs> i've done that the whole time and then went to like the, so, well you know. i mean yeah you're you're come you've come into your own as you know as oh, a yeah. singer and 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 yeah. under your own name you know which is yeah which is really cool man well, it's fun. You know, you can write songs and play and do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> what a concept. Yeah, I never yeah. would have thought it would have been fun to do. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so so tell me about uh, tell me about some of the recent solo records you did. I mean, the last when did you release that that most recent one? Was it that was October? In October, the first part of October, I released that record. And that's funny because it's like come kind of full full circle for me because starting off writing my own songs and doing all that was really late. I mean, my first full-fledged Kirk Fletcher record that I wrote all the songs and all that, sang all the stuff was actually 2018. Yeah, that that's what I thought. That was so that, yeah. that was the first one you did. Yeah, and then this late, late, latest one, you know. Okay. So it's been a long time, you know. I mean, I was doing my own thing, but to write all the songs and to sing all the songs is a different thing, you know. So yeah. that's really well, that, it, it. The that first record when I heard that man, I thought it sounded awesome, man. I was, I was. Oh, thank you. It, it was exciting to hear you singing and doing all your own stuff there. Yeah. Man, it took a long time. And now, you know, I, I've kind of, with the last record, I kind of wanted to just play more blues and more, you know, things like that. So I think now it's like I'm settling and just thinking about what I really, really love, what I really want to do, and just have the confidence to be able to just write and sing and do my thing. And now I just want to do a blues record. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, you you go through all this and you finally start writing your own songs and now you just want to play the blues. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do, you know. Absolutely, man. Well, well you uh, can do all that, you know. So, uh, yeah, we've kind of gone through your your whole timeline and your whole yeah. history, bringing it up to now where where you're 
you're really known as as a solo artist now you know yeah um but uh i want to i want to add touch on a few things i want to yeah. number one i want to talk to you about the your your favorite gear and guitars that you've used through the years and and mm -hmm. stuff you really enjoy using now yeah uh, well i could um definitely I talk mean, on that we did talk about you started out just like a died in the wool stratocaster guy right yeah i mean that's still probably my desert island guitar just because i know it so well but it was a lot of strats I mean, all the way up, you know, through a lot, a lot of strats. And then when I started playing more traditional blues, I saved up my money and tried to get a Gibson guitar because I was really into the traditional blues thing, you know. So I think the first more bluesy kind of guitar was a my first Gibson was a gold top Les Paul with P90s. That's sort of like the classic Chicago blues guitar, Jody Williams, Hubert Sumlin at one time. And, and then I went to like a 330 still in that kind of world. And then I got into humbuckers, same thing, 335, 345, that kind of thing. Playing through like a tweed basement. Well, first I was playing through like rolling jazz courses and PV amps and all this crazy stuff in church. Then it went to like a super reverb, you know, like everybody. <laughs> and then the tweet basement, you know, and then after that, back to the super reverb. And I pretty much stayed with the super reverb. Hard to get. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just uh, you can make all these circles, but that's uh, that that one always works. Yeah. And I mean, it's either a tweet basement or a super reverb, just like it's always been. You know, and then I telecasters, a lot of telecasters, then strats, then back to Gibsons. And, you know, it's kind of. You're playing a, you're playing a Les Paul a lot, though, more now, right? You know, I was playing a Les Paul like a year, couple years ago, um, a lot. Like, because I found a really, really great one when I was out on tour with Joe Bonamassa. And it's like this uh, collector's choice, Nikki. And that guitar just. You know, I'm not the biggest Les Paul guy, but you know, when you find something that just sounds so good, you just kind of play it. That's exactly right. I, I have one that <clears throat> I never I, I never played Gibsons that much. Uh, yeah. Uh, but but I had uh, a friend of mine had this one. It was like a custom shop. It's like more than yeah. old. he had it and and he brought it out for me to play. And I was like, man. You know, this is an amazing instrument. I use it on a couple records. Uh, yeah. And, and finally, uh, he decided to sell it to me. So, and I, I, I've never been able to find another one that sounded like this. So See, once yeah. you get that one, you know, but yeah, I, I was never a, uh, a huge Les Paul guy. Now, uh, I do have my 335. It's a, it's a 62. And yeah, See, that's that, that one's sweet, man. Man, you know, it's like it's like a, a Stratocaster for me, a vintage Strat and a vintage 335. And I, I I just, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it was because, you know, guys like Eric Johnson or whatever, you know, just that kind of, or, or, or like Robin Ford, you know, guys that you see and you hear the sound live, yeah. you know, them playing like a Strat, a vintage Strat or a 335 or a, you know, something like that. And you just go, wow, you know. So those two guitars for me, really, that's that's where I'm most comfortable, a Strat or a 335 style guitar. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Throughout the, you know, thing up until, I've been playing these PRS guitars, the um, Dave Grissom guitar. Yeah, that's, that's been a lot of fun because it's so different. It's been a lot of fun to so play something different. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, yeah, you touched on playing with you did some some tours with Joe, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just back in the last what? Yeah, a few years I played on this um, Three Kings. No, before that, it was the Muddy Wolf, a tribute to um, Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters. And then we done a tribute to the Three Kings, and that was just a lot of fun. I mean, basically, our day was spent 
on a bus. We get to the town. We go to all the vintage guitars, and then we play a bunch of songs that I knew seventy five percent of the songs already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be like. What more could I ask for? Catering? I mean, it was... Oh, yeah. That's a dream dream gig if you're... Yeah, I mean, like... Other artists, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Joe's cool, man. Oh, I He's know. He's into I it. I know y'all are tight, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um... Yeah, I was talking about... with Well, with Josh Smith about the the, the album he and Joe were doing with, with Eric. No. Oh. Eric Gale. Yeah. 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 Eric Samurai guitar. guitar. That yeah. guy is ridiculous. <laughs> that guy, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, what do you what do you say, man? He's just he's <laughs> he's from a different uh you know. Yeah. All, all this stuff we're talking about, I mean, he yeah, he already yeah. Did that early on and he went so far beyond that. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can either look at it like like how I look at it. Or you could look at it another way. I mean, like Eric Gales, you know, I'm just happy I do what I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, cause that right there is like, yeah, that's something else. <laughs> that's yeah. like, I mean, the cat is like, you know, cause he can do all of this beautiful stuff on the guitar, but then he's like super soulful and he'll just do something that'll just be like, Ah, <laughs> you know, so when you marry those two things together, I mean, it's yeah. sort of like pretty amazing. The guy's amazing. <laughs> In fact, I saw an old video clip. I mean, I've uh, I've seen plenty of that old stuff, but an old video clip of him uh, back in back in Memphis. I mean, this was like probably 1991 or two. Or yeah. But um, <laughs> uh, man, I mean, he's on. He looks, I mean, you'd think it's easy E on stage, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and then, but he comes out and he does, he does something either like Riviera Paradise, I think. Yeah. And I mean, the way that guy interprets and puts his sound into that, you know, is just from a different planet, man. <laughs> I'd say. And like I said, all, all the while you're like, is that easy E on stage? <laughs> That guy, man. Wow. Yeah. What a beautiful talent, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I've got to know him a little bit, man. And I'll tell you, man, he's a good dude, too, man. He Eric is. is yeah. <laughs> he, he, Eric he is and great. his wife are, are great people. Yeah. LaDonna. Is, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Well, so, and, and then let's touch on, I mean, this last year, obviously, you know, uh, I'm sure you had a, a whole year's worth of planned of touring and playing, you know, you're living over yeah. in Europe now. Um, I'm sure you've, the last few years, you've been doing a lot of the festivals and, and circuit over there. Well, uh, you know, it's been a kind of a slow process, kind of getting all of the things, all the wheels in motion in Europe and everywhere really with my solo thing. But I was actually really happy about being able to do some things in Europe as well as being able to do some things in the States. Cause that's, you know, that's really, you know, it was starting to pick up a little bit and things were starting to kind of gel together and stuff like that. Yeah. So and I was, you know, so, so we've been shut down for a full year. Um, yeah. But, but you have been, You've been doing a lot of stuff on your YouTube channel, and of course, you know little little clips, really about every day on your Instagram. Um, yeah, just little. Uh, I mean, not really like particular song stuff. Just your ideas, oh, you know, different yeah. different ideas oh. of all your of all your heroes and and all yeah. The and because you you know with that, I wanted to do something that I could. Uh, keep going it's something that that's exciting for me i had to try and think of something that well i can't play on stage so what do i like you know pretty much just as much talking about music you know and talking about the things that i love so if i kept it to like just short videos where i just 
push record. I don't even think about it. I just push record and go, okay, man, we're going to talk about, you know, Sunny Boy today. We're going to talk about Holland Wolf. We're going to talk about R&B. We're going to, you know, and just do it like that. Then it keeps it where I can do a lot of them, you know, it's just stuff I love, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I've I've certainly enjoyed it, and and you've got Thank you. you've got a um, a lot of people that 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 follow your stuff and, and get a lot out of it because of that, and your YouTube channel. So everybody out there, you know, make sure you go and subscribe to Kirk's YouTube channel. And, oh man, and definitely- subscribe to Jake Andrews' uh, YouTube channel too. <laughs> Yeah, we we all got our YouTube channel, man. That's all it's about these days. Yeah, you know, and I and hopefully I'll get somewhere. And you know, Richard Cousins from the Robert Cray Band lives in uh, Switzerland too. So hopefully down the line we can even do some kind of, you know, jamming a little bit, you know, because you know that'll be fun just to get in the room and just you know jam a little duo trio or whatever. Oh, you know? it, it sure it sure makes you realize how much just how much fun it is to just play with some people you know we we're doing this you know all the time for our careers you're just it's just what you do but when you don't do it for a full year you're like man i mean i just get out in the yard and jam with some friends i don't care man yeah. I'll, I'll strum some chords on acoustic yeah. i'll sing some kumbaya anything man. yeah <laughs> kumbaya yeah totally man <laughs> to make you realize how much just just music in any form is so so fun absolutely and it, it gets you past a little of that music snob within you like yeah i, I wouldn't do that you know man that's the, that's what it is with these youtube videos man i was like man i'm gonna talk about music and talk about my records who's gonna be low tech yeah. <laughs> i don't care i'll just yeah. talk about it you know yeah, yeah. that's so totally. cool man well um Kirk, any, anything else you want to kind of add to it? It, it? You know, once we get past all. Yeah, the- sure. I got things I want to add to it, a couple <laughs> things. Man, so tell me about this strat of yours, man. The one I first saw you with, man, when you played yeah, the uh, yeah. Let me, Cafe let me, Boogaloo, I think it was. That's a, I, actually a, a friend of mine who was playing drums with me back when I was a teenager. Uh, yeah. This, uh, well, Tommy Taylor, who played with Eric. Oh, Jones. yeah, I know Tommy Taylor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this this was his strat. In fact, I don't know if Eric had it for a while and played it too, but. Um, yeah. This was his strat. It's a 60. Yeah. And uh, he, you know, I I bought it from Tommy back then. It it, it looked a little prettier back then, but. Uh, man, I saw, I saw Tommy Taylor play with you. Yeah, True. yeah, yeah, yeah Cafe Boogaloo's killing, man. <laughs> he was playing with him for years, yeah. I was like, man, he got Tommy Taylor playing drums. <laughs> that, I mean, that's when I, I feel like I really, I really got, you know, to a different level because when I was 15, I started uh, just doing a, a trio, Tommy on drums, and then this amazing, awesome musician, John Blondell on bass. Oh, I know who that is, yeah. And so, and you know, I I had to I had to do everything. I had to really take it up, you know, all the vocal, you know, singing and you're playing yeah. simultaneously. So that will that will get you good real quick. Yeah, absolutely, man. I remember that strat too because it had a you know because I hadn't seen too many vintage strats. I had saw some, but I remember the the fingerboard being so much darker than the rosewood. I was like, is that ebony or something? Yeah. Way back then, you know. It's yeah, just, but that was like, okay, I get to see a legit strat, you know, like, that, it's like that, old, totally. uh, that rosewood they used back then was just, yeah, super. Oh, super. yeah, and then how it sweats in, I got, I have a 64 that's like that, you know. Love it, man. Yeah, I mean, my, yeah. this Esquire is a 61. And oh, okay. Same way, man. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like, a, it, it almost sounds it almost sounds like a humbucker on it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just yeah. straight in. I mean, it almost sounds like a saxophone, man. It's so, <laughs> like, you know. I try to tell people that. It's it, amazing. It doesn't have that, 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 
country picking sound of a telly. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> not by a mile. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, what else? I Oh, and I also saw you play a Flying V2 for a little while. Yeah, yeah. I I, I had found an old uh, a vintage, you know, a 70s one yeah. down here. And, and it was, you know, it was just kind of so out there to, to be. Yeah. Doing. So I like carry around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet you it sounded good though. It did sound. I do remember it sounding good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. I think that's all the questions I have for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, man, th this this was a blast, and it was so fun. Oh, my pleasure. To connect again, you know, uh, we should do one again where we we actually get the guitars out and play a few ideas <laughs> and talk totally. about. You know, more, focus more on uh, some of the music. You know, talk about some of our favorite licks from all yeah. our favorite artists and stuff. Yeah, we should do that definitely. Too. Yeah, for sure. I'm down. <laughs> all right, man. Well, so so uh, last thing, tell us, you know, where everybody can find your stuff for your albums. You know, on your website. What are some sites? Yeah, out? yeah. Well, my website is kirkfletcherband.com and um, my latest record came out late last year, My Blues Pathway and Kirk Fletcher Music is my Instagram or you could just go to my website and find out all that information. And that's really it. Check out my YouTube channel. I'm posting all the time about stuff I really love. <laughs> and, the, and the albums, where can they download it? Off the website or where? Anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. Okay iTunes, yeah. everything. Yeah. iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify. You don't even have to pay for it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, luckily, we, we've been making a lot of money off that Spotify, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah not... All right, Kirk. Well, great pleasure, man. And uh, Pleasure. Thank let, you. Let's, let's do it again soon, and we'll, we'll bring out the guitars. and. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool, bro. man. Peace Take care. Time. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. I will. You too.